Welcome back to Nate's Garage and Bakery. We have gotten through step nine on this 3D printer build. We're going to start with step 10. We're going to end up with a sliding Y-axis table on step 16. Let's do it. Step 10. Aha! Uh -huh. We're going to put the stepper in place that actually runs the belt. That, that is the spinner for. And that's going to be on the back rail here. Okay? Now, that bracket is... Wait for it. Pa dow That one right there. Yet again, with the M5 by... Oh, these are M5 by... 8s, not M5 by 12, because this is a little skinny piece of metal, not a big thick piece of acrylic. So, M5 by 8s. We're going to need two of them, because they're going to go right through there, and they're going to attach this sucker either here or here. We'll figure that out in a second. But we need two of these. And the same M5 And they're going to go through here like so. One there. One there. Looks like we got a little more play on these to fit through there. So maybe screw in a little further to start with. All right, so the way this needs to go on there this little notch here needs to face the bottom, so it's going to have to go on there like this. So, we're going to put these <laughs> back here. Like so. So, there we go. Um, I'm guessing that, again, in general, centered and not O-tightened than before the outside thing of coming together to later. Now that we have that in place, that is a motor mount. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Motors. Motors are coming. So is winter. Now, what it says here actually is this needs to be located about 50 millimeters from here. Now, what? Get this closer to the camera. So there's our 50 millimeters. You know, I don't know if I got that on there exactly straight or not. Whoa! Hi, sliders. They slide very well. I don't have a license, but I slide very well, officer. So there is a little bit of play in there as far as where it gets whatevered. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mount the motor to this, and then we'll measure uh, stuff to make sure it's actually level. You know what I'm saying? G. We need a 40 millimeter motor, and then also four pieces of the M3 by five. So there's the M3 by fives, four pieces. That's what's going to attach this motor to this bracket. One, one large motor. Ah, ah. That sucker. There's your mounting points. Well, I'm gonna guess correctly, as it turns out, that this gets mounted. Here, oh, like so. Now there are there 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 they're saying that that electrical connector needs to come out that way. So I'll put it out that way. Go ahead and find L. Watch my hooser here. If you put the top ones in first, it will. Uh, should hold the motor in place better than if you try to put the bottom ones in. There's a whole lot more torque trying to break the bottom screws, whatever. This is all pretty lightweight stuff, but in general, it would behoove you to put the top ones in first, I guess is what I'm saying. You do whatever the hell you want. I'm putting the top ones in first. I'm not going to tighten those all the way in yet because I still have two more screws to put in. I am going to tilt this up like this and see if I can't drop it at least once. Once I get this tightened on here, oh, you know what? <laughs> Damn it. 
I just realized that this shaft is going to be in the way of my tightening those bolts. Alright, so that's on there now. What I'm going to do is measure to make sure this side is as high as this side and then tighten those down. But obviously, well, well, <laughs> heel and easy. You know what if I had a ball end set of these? Which I do. So I'm going to go ahead and get those because I'm not going to take this apart. I want to make sure this is straight. I actually don't think it's going to matter because it's a rubber belt. But I'm going to make sure it's straight. What I mean by a ball end hex wrench is it's actually got like a ball end. Which size? Let's say a four. <laughs> we'll find out in a moment, apparently. So, does a four fit in there? Yes, it does. So that is a four millimeter. If you're fortunate enough to have a set of these, kick ass. If not, well, tighten that up before you screw that on there. Again, I don't think it's going to matter because this doesn't have to be straight. It's going to be driving that belt, which is going to be able to deal with the fact that that's not completely straight. <clears throat> But like I said, sometimes I get picky. Although, you know what? The more I think about it, I don't give a crap if it's straight enough. I just don't want to take it back apart again. So, I'm going to hairy eyeball it here. Make sure that this edge here is straight with this edge here. And call it a day. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Come on, baby. Get out of there. Come on. There you go. Okay, now I have that in there nice and good. There we go. Alright, let's put my special tools back away. So now we got that baby mounted. Synchronous belt pulleys. That's these dudes right here. And we is going to put one of them dudes on this dude's right there. We want about three millimeters between that flange and that thing, is what it says here. But, uh, it does not tell us, you know, which of these little fastening nuts should go on the flat part of the shaft, but that doesn't matter. We'll figure that part out. There's a flat part of the shaft facing straight up. I'm going to go ahead and make it so that this one hits the flat shaft and that one does not. And uh, it does need to be in this way so that the big end is towards the motor. That's going to take the littlest little allen key you have. So again, that kit so far has been very complete. I'm going to get that down there to where it's actually hitting something and then I'll back it off and measure out my three millimeter and we'll measure three millimeters roughly one two three three millimeters ah, ah. I don't know what a millimeter is either but Now, this little set screw is stripped right the hell out. I'm sitting here spinning it. That one's stripped out too. You know what? I don't think it's the screw that's stripped out. I think it's this thing. Let's see if this one acts any different. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that's nice and tight. So, okay. What did that turn into? That turned into this particular small Allen wrench, hex key, that came with this kit is not very sized well for these little dudes right here. So I had to use my own just to make sure that that was tight in there. They are tight in there now. Step 13. That is step 13 is to put that pulley in place. Step 14 
Oh, here we go with the end stops. These are going to mount to... Okay, so that's the piece. This is one of those 3D printed pieces that came with it. It's got the little fins down there. I don't see any rays, just fins. Oh, Star Wars joke. And we're going to use M2 by 16. There's the M2 by 16 and two of the nuts. So we need two of these and two of the nuts that are also in there. Boy, those little screws are, well, little. What needs to happen here is we need one of these. Okay, so unbundle. I know those aren't going to the same place, obviously, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off of here. I have stripped that off of there, these these wire, these these doomahickeys right here come apart quite easily without a problem. So there's our little limit switch. A little click in there. Anyway, that's gonna tell this machine when it gets to a certain point. It's gonna bump that little switch and tell it, hey, stop, bastard. That's gonna be mounted to here. Specifically. Specifically, it's going to be mounted um, probably on this side because there's not room on the other side. With this thing in this orientation, this is going to be mounted like this. All right. They are telling us to put the screws through this way as opposed to the other way. I don't know if it's going to matter that much or not, but I'm sticking with the instructions. Here's our crappy Allen key again. So those screws are way long enough and a little hard to get all the way tightened down because, well, that's just how things work. When you turn it here, it turns the whole nut. That's not because of this kit. That is just how the world works in mechanics. So now you got that switch on there. <laughs> Alright, well, okay, so we have that there now. Ta-da! The next step, step 15, now is apparently step 14. Step 15... Oh, well, yeah, that makes sense now. Step 15 to get this plate out of here. And then use some M3 by 10s. All right, I didn't find any M3 by 10s, but never fear. They gave us quite a few extras of what we have here. So M3 by 10, we've got extra M3 by 16s. We only need two M3 by 10s. Uh, eight. It says we need eight in the kit. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in here. So maybe, maybe they meant us to use these in the first place. Bad documentation. Probably okay. If later I run out of these, then I shall know. But for now, we're just going to use two M3 by 16s. Step 15 here, and two of the corresponding M3 nuts. There we go. Now, what happens here is that you take this right here, and you mount this right here to the bottom of this right here using those two holes. Now, this being a symmetrical piece, no it's not symmetrical. It's got two sets of mounts here and one set of mounts here. What for mounting to these little dudes right here? I'm seeing it come together, baby. So that's gonna mount to there like that. And this is gonna be the end stop. So this has to be on there the correct place to actually bump into something. Mm, okay, well, it's not entirely clear until you look at it real closely. 
They do give you the information, but they sure do make you look closely at the pictures. With uh, those two mounting sets there, that switch needs to face that way. So that switch is going to bump up against the back here somewhere. What we need to do is mount this to there. Attention! Attention! You will want to use Loctite on these two nuts and screws. Otherwise, they will back out on your ass. You've been warned. Thank you, and have a nice day. I do need to make sure that this is on here right again. So switch that way. Switch that way so that when it's around this way, that switch bumps up against the back. got our Dumeki on the thingamabob and now they want us to attach this to the sliding pieces like so step 16 step 16 is to attach this to the things using the m4 by 8s we don't need a nut for these because they thread directly into these blocks here so we'll get 4 8 12 out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of the X head screws at the 3D printer. in place just not really tightened all the way down yet and with that said yeah there's still some play in here and I don't know if that's gonna get better with these tightened down but uh, what I will do this is one of those things I do want to make sure is fairly think about that for a second obviously that needs to roll back and forth straightly which these take care of it really doesn't matter if this thing is crooked because uh, this is just the platform that the thing is going to be printing on. I mean, obviously, you know, it's not going to be that crooked, but yeah. So, not necessary to get this all the way square. I'll leave it up to you how square you make yours. Obviously, I have no say in how square you make yours, so figure it out, homie. To put two here and only one up here, why didn't they put two up here also? Again, probably a cost-cutting measure. I just squashed a bug. I'm sorry, PETA. Showing, showing, waka waka waka. And go ahead and tighten all these. Tighten until it cracks. Back it off quarter turn. You know. Tighten her till she strips. Put a bigger screw in. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Getting annoying yet? So, <clears throat> all the way through step 16 now of our little hick top prusai three build well that's it for this episode on nate's garage and bakery did you get this far did you like what you saw go ahead on and click that subscribe button for future videos hell click the like button while you're at it leave a comment if you got questions i'll try to answer them. later